Yeah, my name is Kilda Adalfa. Uh Two kids, Felicia and Francis. Older son, Felicia, born 27 March 2015. Um, was diagnosed with autism uh, a couple of years back. I think it was about three years old, two years old, three years old. And uh, yeah, that's my connection to autism. shocked didn't want to believe it um, I think I treated it as if it was a to me it came as if it was like a disease um, I didn't want to believe in it I was just shocked shocked at it like I didn't I keep saying doctors didn't know what they're saying or what they're talking about just give him time um, he'll eventually get over this whole like so uh, he was like um, not responding to things, um, wasn't saying much. So I just thought it was like a, just a little period there where he was eventually going to get over it. Was given time, he'll get over it. But um, yeah, mostly shocked and hurt. Didn't want to believe it. Yeah. I don't know. Just mostly with disbelief. Like I didn't want to believe that it was whatever the doctors were saying, what it was that he had autistic, um, that he had autism, um, I didn't want to believe it, it was angry, anger, I didn't want to believe that he had it, I thought it would give him time, once I did realise what autism was and the spectrum and how wide the spectrum is, um, it's it was, it was more understand. It was more like I didn't understand it, but yeah, I came to accepting and finding, believing, and understanding what it was and what is it um, that Felicia had. So it, was, it became much easier to accept and work on how we could better and things that would help him throughout his life. But yeah, I didn't want to take slow down by my feelings because of how I felt about it. But once I finally got a full understanding, um, yeah, mm. moved on for it. Well, mainly my wife, she works in that field. She understands and knows all of that. So. I was actually learning a lot from her. Um, what are the things that we should do? What are the things we need to do? Um, she did majority of the things. All I did was like, uh, back her up, support, um, anything that she needed help with, I'd try and fill in. But she did the major work. So she actually went in, out there, communicated to everyone, tried to put him into um, little therapy sessions, organized everything for him. Um, she also printed out little cards. She researched on ways of communication and um, yeah, she got us to do like little things at home to help with that. And yeah, like none of this would have happened if it wasn't for Felicia's mum, my wife, but it was her that taught us everything with this. Like I said, yeah, she, because she works in the field, she's um, a social worker. She was able to know who to speak to um, she knew the ins and outs who were the right people to speak to I was getting some information from outsiders as well who I didn't know much but I was listening to them as well which I didn't ask my wife and she would say no 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 she's already spoken to the right people these people are not the ones that we actually need for Felicity but it was good that she had all that background First, it was hard, but the bad days were really bad. Um, once you become more patient and understanding, I think you can turn any bad day to a positive. A bad day, for, I remember bad, bad days before like for Felicia. Look, tantrums, Lisa touch, touch tantrums all the time. 
if he, whatever he doesn't want, whatever he wants and doesn't get, he'll chuck it to tantrum. What took a while for us to learn was if you just let him chuck the tantrum, let him get out of his system, he'll be fine after that. Um, there are days where other people in the, like in our families, in my partner and I's family, not understanding the situation where Felicia has a tantrum, they would all rush in to try and sort it out or try and look, not understanding if he had just sit back, let him chuck his tantrum, let him be, he'll eventually get over it and get up and you know, forget about everything. But it, it'll be at like special functions like birthdays, um, there are things that we can't attend like church. It's something that like, my wife and I would like to go to church and as a family and do, but uh, we take turns going to church, uh, just because Lisa does not do well inside the church. Not that it doesn't do well. Um, we decided to let other people in the church have pray and come to church and do their thing because Felicia just walks around, makes noises, and we don't want to distract everyone else that's there. So he comes outside and plays outside, and we, my wife and I take turns where we just, one week, one of us will be in, the other week, the other one will be in. But yeah, that's that's probably the worst days that I think that I could think of. Is yeah, every time there's a big occasion or where there's a big crowd, when he has a tantrum, everyone's there trying to sort it out. But I think we've learned from it and moved on from there. That we just let him have his tantrum, move on. He was sweet after that. For instance, haircuts, doesn't do all haircuts. We literally have to, I've got to lean up against a wall. I've got to hold him down. No barber would cut his hair. We'd gone to so many barbers around Para, Campbelltown. No barber would cut his hair due to the fact that he won't sit still. They don't want to, you know, safety reasons, they don't want to accidentally cut him. Uh, we did go to snippets in Gregory Hills. It was okay there, but again, I still need to sit down on the floor, hold him down, arms, legs hold, where my wife would hold his head, and the barber would quickly try and cut his hair as fast as I can. Um, anytime he cuts his hair is a bad day. Um, he doesn't get his snippets no more, he knows what's there, so we try and trick him at home, where my wife's younger brother now cuts his hair. Um, Every time we cut his hair, it's always a struggle. The other night when we cut his hair, we sat down, her brother came out with the clippers. I think Felicia looked up, saw it, he just said no, but he put his head back down, focusing on the phone, and um, bit up. My brother-in-law was cutting his hair, and um, yeah, it wasn't so much of a fight. Like There were little times here and there where he would try and stop Bitter from cutting his hair, and would hold, I would hold his arm down, but majority of the time I let him go, he sat there and went through the whole thing. Mm. So that was a good day for me. Mm. Those moments do come along, yeah. Here and there, like the first word, first walk, but that's like, that's with every kid. Yeah. Um, same thing, like everything. There's um, one thing I remember of you said, is, um, being invited to the first birthday party, I think. Um, that was good. That was that was awesome. That was a special moment. Uh, just just through preschool. When he went to preschool, childcare. Um, he didn't. He was look. He was a rough kid. Going in there, I can understand. Kids didn't want to play with him. Um, it did hurt dropping him off, seeing him getting excited to see kids and running up towards them and the kids running away and watching her son walk away with his head down, that hurt. Mm. Hurt watching that. <clears throat> but you can't force the kids to go play with them. Like, I understand the kids are scared of him and didn't want to get hurt, but like, um, just understanding, just, just realizing when you got the invitation, I don't know, it's like a, I hit a soft spot. Mm. Uh, 
Stop. Stop, stop, stop. ever gonna get invited to things like that. I didn't think he was ever gonna have friends that just taking him there, organising with their parents as well. I was a kid. Um, it was good, it was a good day. We went there and I could see this Felicia enjoying himself. I could see the other kids all knew his name, all knew who he was. You could tell the ones that, the ones that were scared of him because as he was walking towards one direction, you could see all those other kids splitting and running away. So I could tell those were the ones that he probably done something or had hurt or like put fear in. But there's, you can see the older kids there that knew him. Um, it was good. It was a good day. He enjoyed himself. That's one special moment being invited to the birthday party for our kids' birthday party. I see things different. I'm starting to see, um, not knowing what autism was, starting to see like there like they, they may be other people that have, may have autism and not know it. Um, it made me feel like they could make fun of or something like that. They may have autism, not knowing they had autism, but I'm making fun of them. Things like that. Like I started thinking back in like, that we shouldn't be doing things like that to other people, we should be there supporting people and like um, backing them up and lifting them up, not, not, not putting them down. But yeah, after that it's just like, you know, it's a whole, whole eye opener seeing, um, seeing Felicia's transition and the little things that he picks up every day. Anytime he says a new sentence or a new word, it's like a, a new celebration. Like him learning new things, it's always it's it's, it's like he it makes it makes you happy as if as if you're saying his first word. Like anytime he does something different, but yeah. Look, as a life, look, you start seeing things of people and um, understanding more of, the, of people. You know, because to those that's had autism, autistic kids before that people have autism and still dealing with it and struggling with it. Like, I can see people at school, they come to me, talk to me about Felicia and they tell me about their struggles. Like, you know, it's, I know it's bad, but like, it kind of feels good knowing that other people are also going through the same struggles we're going through. It's not just us, like my wife and I, like, and our families. It's like everyone, anyone, Everyone's also going through the same thing. So, not saying that you know, it's good that they're all going through the same thing, but it felt good that they're also experiencing, that other people are experiencing the same thing that we're experiencing. Mm. Mm. So, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, most most of the old, uh, most of the adults, the old adults, don't understand it. Um, majority of them think that you know we we raised him wrong. We done things, or I don't know. Like the majority don't believe in autism. They believe that like, we just didn't raise him properly. It hurts listening to it. But um, yeah, they're, they're more old school. I feel like if um, if if they start having a better understanding, if there's more awareness in the 
um, Tongan cultures or with the PR culture communities. More understanding of that, like um, I think, I think we can now, um, as a community, as the PR community, we can work towards things like that and come up with um, ways to help out, <clears throat> help each other out, you know, you know, fundraisers and stuff like that. But until it's fully well understanding in the communities, I don't think it would happen. Um, I know I know there are some families there that understand it, but a majority of them don't understand it and still think that, you know, it's it's nothing normal. Like it's um it's normal, um they just weren't taught properly or raised properly and things like that. But once they have a better understanding I can see that you'll pick up. Mm. So Francis is the second kid. Um, yeah, no, nah, he's good. He's good. He's very rough with Francis. Growing up, he was very rough with Francis. Um, Francis has now, I think, adapted to that roughness, and now Francis is rough back to him, which I think he didn't expect because uh, I feel like he gets scared at Francis sometimes. Um, He's very good with Francis. Like, um, there are times where he'll go snatch toys off Francis, and as Francis starts crying, he'll look for anything else at the closest object to him, and he'll try and give that to Francis. It doesn't matter what it is. If that's a piece of sock on the floor, he'll give that to Francis. Um, if it's like another toy, or if it's a clothing, he'll give that to Francis. He'll like rub his head and try and wipe his tears, but then he just walks away with whatever he took off Francis. Uh, I do feel bad for Francis because I do feel like a majority of our attention does go to Lucy, but with my wife and I do still try and give time to Francis. Francis has been good with Felicia. Um, the, for instance, today I bought the Maccas on my way to my parents' house. Um, Felicia had a drink of his drink, finished down his uh, apple juice. And Francis asked me to open his. Felicia went to try and snatch it off Francis, and I told Felicia to leave it. That's Francis' drink. Francis turned to me and said, uh, It's alright, Dad. I let Francis let Lisa have it. Francis gave his drink to Lucia and he just said to Lucia, Look, are you alright Felicia? And he just gave his drink away to Lucia. So his brother to drink. <coughs> Stop. Just to anybody out there, any parent, look, it's it's nothing different. It's the same as having in, like, like it's your child, like it's it's the best thing, like, not the best thing that they have, or like autism, but like a child with autism and a child without autism, they're, they're both the same thing to me. Um, just having a child is probably the best thing. But like, you know, you love you love them the same. All the kids do, like, you love them the same. And they're, they're really smart kids, the autistic kids. They're very smart. Like, that's the one thing you learn from them. They're very smart. Don't get angry at them. Be patient. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get frustrated. Um, if you're patient, like, everything, everything, what what a bad day would be can turn good, can become a positive if you're just patient.
love you. I love you. Oh, I love you. I love you. <laughs> Does it get better? Oh, it does. 100% it does. <laughs> always does. Everything that was into was happy in me. <laughs>